It's Tuesday, September 12th, and this is your Barbados Today News Update. I'm Franiela Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. Our top story, fire damaged three houses in the St. Michael community of Jessamine, leaving one man and his son homeless. Ricky Boyce was jolted from his sleep by loud screams from his aunt, Lauren Boyce, who told Barbados Today how the incident unfolded. I say fair, fair, hollering for my niece here. Angela, Angela, fair, fair, fair. I'm trying to get to the back yet so hard, and then all of a sudden here, everything, my name, everything, then they run away for Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. And I just, I know stop beating fast, and I just say, what, what, I get on the road, somebody, and everybody running here. So you want to help him to, to, to tell him, but he ain't save anything, so I just, I just, he's getting ready to go on. Boyce lost all his possessions and was too distraught to speak to the media. Over 10 boys between the ages of 17 and 27 who were nearby saw the smoke and rushed to lend a helping hand. Acting Divisional Officer of the Barbados Fire Service, Henderson Patrick, was so impressed with the community's response that he publicly thanked the youngsters. I commend you for the tremendous work that you did in assisting these um, residents to get stuff out of their house. And some of you um, had hose, your own garden hose, trying to help out. I saw some of you assisting the fire department in, in holding their own hose and, and those kind of things. And all of that action led to the final outcome that we had today. If you did not do the part that you did, it would probably be worse. So I want to take the opportunity to commend you. When, when you do good, you must be commended, right? So I want to take the opportunity to thank you for the work that you did um, in assisting the residents and by extension also assisting the fire department in achieving the outcome that we have here. Thankful to be alive. That's how Charlene Bovell, Brian Cole and Melissa Coyman, three Barbadians who reside in St. Martin, are feeling today. They endured the horror of the powerful Hurricane Irma, which decimated the territory. Today, they were rescued and brought home by the Barbados Defense Force with their assistance from the Regional Security System headquarters. Bovell, who has been teaching on the island for just over a year, described the experience as simply awful. Where I was staying, it wasn't, I didn't know the destruction was so bad. Only after we left and went like two blocks down, I realized that. Awful. Roofs, trees, everything, everything was awful. Um, some of my friends lost their houses, and I didn't feel that way because you know it didn't hit me. Um, the looting was scary because I lived alone, and they were they started to rob houses too, so that that was a bit scary. So then I stayed with a friend of mine, but I didn't really feel it. But I just want to get out of the house. Cole, also a teacher, described it as a nightmare and said Barbadians should be more thankful when weather systems miss the island. It's peer setting really quickly because communication went down very quickly. Communication went down very quickly and the spear setting, so the spear setting and the looting started and and you saw you saw the well, the two sides of human nature. The kind the kind acts of strangers, of people who you just say good morning or good evening to as you were on your way to work and then you saw the senselessness of some um, breaking into stores that weren't damaged during the hurricane TV, um, TVs, jewelry so it was a, it's, it's a, a total mixed bag but I, I, I hope they recover, I, I know they will it'll take them some time Meanwhile, Anguillan Mark Connor, who has been stranded here in Barbados for a few days now, is anxious to return to his homeland to share some much-needed goodies. During his unexpected stay caused by the passage of Hurricane Irma, Connor has been receiving supplies for his countrymen, including water and medicine, from members of the public. Connor told Barbados today he is overwhelmed by the generosity of Barbadians and he's hoping other Caribbean neighbors will follow suit. I think we need to get this out there, this, this effort, what Barbados is actually doing for Angola, um, to get a positive impression through, from the Caribbean throughout the world, because we've obviously we heard what's happening in Samoa and we're, we're hearing what's happening in BVI, 
and um, that's on a piece of the, the country, on a piece of the Caribbean. And we are one, we are one nation. Um, and it's good that we could showcase what Barbados is doing, which is a positive, positive real, real positive effort. In other news, the president of the Bar Association says transparency is a must if the justice system is to improve. Liesel Weeks made the comment today in response to yesterday's call from Moravian priest Adrian Smith, who raised concern that there were too many people holding the wrong posts in the judicial system and it was time for an overhaul. Weeks agreed, and she told Barbados today there should be full transparency when posts are being filled. And I think what our problem might be is that in a lot of our institutions, we haven't set out specific criteria for what is best, how to get a round peg so that we could put it in a round hole. And I think if you had a system where you had criteria set out, not just qualifications, but there are personal characteristics that are required for certain positions. There is a certain amount of administrative and managerial um, skill sets that are required. Those things, and those things should be clearly set out somewhere. And the people who wish to take those positions must be able to demonstrate in a real way that they satisfy these criteria. And that's how you best know whether you have a round peg for a round hole or you're trying to fit a hexagon in it. And I think that until we revisit how we do this, we're going to continue asking ourselves a question. There's regional and international news after this short break. Morning, Miss Oya. Morning. <laughs> you again. So you're washing cars now. Well, I can't keep up with you at all. Yes, girl. You know they've got provisions to sell in slow. Mm. And I don't sell nation newspapers at all because they don't sell. So I'm washing cars now. I like to get up before 8.30 because I can't take the hot sun. You want the car wash? No, not today. It clean. But, but you're going in very early though? Yeah, I'm just going early so I can read the bar. Better sit there online before work starts. Right. Well, you can still let me uh, clean the vendor for the $2. At least it's still cheaper than the nation newspaper. All right. <laughs> I, I got a special boo here that I got it uh -huh. showing me. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy your day here. Uh -huh. You too. All right. What that paper is? She can't see clearly when the dirt is gone. The Barbados Today, news you can trust. Continuing with regional developments, more than 100 high-risk prisoners escaped in the British Virgin Islands during Hurricane Irma, a British junior minister said on Tuesday as he raised the death toll in the British territories to nine. Junior Foreign Minister Alan Dunklin told the Parliament today that there is a serious threat of a complete breakdown of law and order in the BVI. Duncan said Royal Marines were deployed to cope with the threat but did not disclose how many prisoners had been apprehended or how many were still at large. The Daily Telegraph said notes from a cabinet meeting that were leaked to the press on Tuesday suggested that as many as 60 had yet to be recaptured. Now, French President Emmanuel Macron today pledged to rebuild the French Caribbean territories ravaged by Hurricane Irma amid mounting criticism that European nations and the U.S. had neglected their responsibilities in the region. He kept his tie on, but he did roll up his sleeves, and I think that was very much the message he was trying to send, that he's here to get to work, that he understands uh, the plight of the people, and, and there's really a context that I want to uh, emphasize for our viewers here, and the general context is that is the, the relationship between the French Caribbean islands and mainland France. That is a relationship that is fraught, that is tense at the best of times. Uh, Caribbean islands, French Caribbean islands feel that they are the estranged cousin that doesn't get all the resources, all the love, all the attention that aren't prioritized even at the best of times so now when they see all this destruction and by the way let's pause to consider this number 60 percent of the buildings and homes in st martin are uninhabitable so what do you do with that you can't live in them so when they consider this destruction and they consider that france is one of the top tier economies in the world they're wondering why don't we get more and why don't we get it faster here's what the french president said what we put in place since the hurricane is one of the most important air bridges, air 
facilities since the Second World War, the time of speaking, there are 1,900 armed troops in Saint-Martin to secure the location and every day very significant means with regards to planes, helicopters and boats that are communicating with metropolitan France to provide means to survive and emergency services. And finally, residents of the Turks and Caicos Islands face a large rebuilding effort after Hurricane Irma made landfall this week. The BBC's Nick Bryan has the report. Basically, my family, we lost everything, man. Everything. It's going to take some time to get back on our feet again, but through the strength from God, we will. What's striking here is the determination to rebuild, not just to put roofs over people's heads again, but to reopen these restaurants and to reopen these hotels as quickly as possible. Everyone here is telling us the same thing. Tourism is the lifeblood of these communities, and without it, the suffering will continue. I want the world to know Turks and Caicos is not destroyed. We are open for business. We are a fine destination. We are not destroyed. We have some damages. We're going to rebuild. We have rebuilt from Ike and Hana. We're going to rebuild. We're going to come back. Turks and Caicos is open for business. That's a bedroom. That's the bathroom. And that's another bedroom over there. No people say seeing is believing, and I really see it, but I still can't believe it. But I still trust in God, believing in him that whatever happened, he will take us through. This is a British overseas territory. The anthem people sing here is God save the Queen. People have British passports. So there's been anger on this island about the absence of a UK-led aid effort. People here feel not so much like British citizens, but castaways. That's a bond in bottom. My message is to step up to the plate, come now and help us send relief. We don't want no more speeches. We don't want no more lip service. Or pack your bags and leave. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website, www.popularstudy.bv. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're also on Exumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And don't forget Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.